This is the new Ionic 6, and it's a car with a huge amount of pressure resting on its slippery shoulders. You see, this is the new sister car to the Ionic 5, the brilliant Ionic 5. Without question, one of the best family cars, one of the best electric cars that you can buy today, potentially the best car in the world right now. Now, they say that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And you would think that with this 6, Hyundai would have changed as little as possible. But look at it. That's not the case. They've changed quite a lot. This is a surprisingly different car to the Ionic 5, but fear not, because it is, in its own way, absolutely brilliant. And in this video, I'm going to show you why. This is the new Ionic 6. These are the beautiful mountains of eastern South Korea. And this is the Fully Charged Show. Like the Fully Charged Show? Then you will love our six live shows being held around the world in 2023, starting with Sydney, Australia on March the 11th and 12th. Right, Hyundai Ionic 6, we've got it. It's finally here, the production spec version of this very, very significant car. Can I just say, this has been quite a good week. We've been in South Korea for a few days now. We spent the last couple of days zooming about in the new bonkers EV6 GT, and now we've got this. And this is a big one. What is it? Well, it's the sleeker, more slippery sibling to the Ionic 5. And the big difference for me between these two cars is efficiency because make no mistake this design this shape is not just for funsies it's not just for turning heads this is an efficiency car and we're going to be talking a lot about design and aero and efficiency in this video i can assure you some essential numbers for you this first edition car when it lands in the uk is going to cost fifty four thousand nine hundred and ninety five pounds we don't have exact pricing for the lower level variants yet but we can expect they're going to be somewhere in the mid 40. so all in all pound for pound it's a few grand more expensive than the ionic 5. it doesn't sit above it it's an alternative to it if you will There'll be two battery options, just like the 5, a 54 kilowatt hour and a 74 kilowatt hour. It remains to be seen if we're going to get the smaller battery version in the UK, because with the 5, everyone buys the big battery. So I think they're kind of umming and ahhing about whether it's worth it. What we will get definitely is a rear wheel drive and all wheel drive variant. This is the all wheel drive and coming shortly, the N version, the fast one, the spicy one, which is a fairly bonkers thought. We'll, we'll, we'll stick a pin in that one for the time being. Anyway, enough boring numbers. Let's have a little look around this thing. Let's just poke and prod around it. And what you're going to see across this car is that wind has very much dictated the design. This is clearly a car that has spent a fair bit of time in a wind tunnel. As such, you've got this very swoopy shape, even at the front, as little flat frontal area as possible, as little in the way of openings and holes as possible. This, of course, is active cooling for the battery. That's closed as much as possible to increase its aerodynamic properties and then it opens up when the battery needs to be cooled and then here really the only uh, clear connection between this and the ionic 5 as far as design that pixel motif that we know and love from the 5 but other than that it, it's not really that recognizable as a sibling and i really like that this is something that hyundai has explicitly said that it's doing going forward with its models we're not going to bother with this kind of cookie cutter design philosophy where every car looks like a bigger or smaller version of every other car, each Hyundai Ionic car is going to have its own distinct look, which I think is really cool. Anyway, around the side. This is where we begin to see that ultra streamlined shape, heavily inspired, of course, by the Hyundai Prophecy concept that we saw a few years ago, also clearly inspired by the early 20th century streamliner cars. It's a great looking thing, in my opinion. Really aero slippery shapes are not the easiest to make look good. I'll refer you to the Mercedes EQS, which is very aerodynamic but not especially eye-catching we tend to associate modern car design or good modern car design with angles and square bits and aggression this is the opposite to all of that but really really eye-catching and i will say much much better in the metal than it is in pictures how efficient is it i hear you ask well hyundai on its press release lists uh, the efficiency of this car with the optimal spec so that'll be the smaller battery because it's lighter and of course rear wheel drive as 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour now i think that's extremely conservative based on what i've seen driving this car myself today i think that's an extremely conservative number i think you could get 4.4 miles to the kilowatt hour in your sleep 
in this thing and actually substantially more than that if you were a bit careful. We'll speak on that a bit later but actually let's say it's just that 4.4 kilowatt hours. Let's compare that to my Polestar 2 which is somewhere around two and a half miles per kilowatt hour typically. We're talking about an extra 50 or more miles of range from a car with the same size battery. That is why efficiency is so important. That's why it's so great to see a car like this so obviously prioritizing it. Anyway, more on that later. Let's go back to the cool stuff. Look at these camera wing mirrors. They are see-through, that is awesome. They're not really see-through. I mean, the kind of outer casing is transparent and then inside of that, there's just more casing. But the more casing is designed in such a way that it kind of looks like you're staring at the gubbins and the tech and the bits. And I really like that. It's such an unusual touch. Love these wheels on the launch car. We've seen a few of these milling about in Seoul um, with the smaller wheels and the, I'm not a fan of them. I think the whole car is slightly ruined by the smaller aero wheels because it's quite a intricate fussy design and it needs intricate fussy wheels and those just work for me. Get the big ones, do it, sacrifice the five miles of range. It's got plenty. What else? Oh, let's talk dimensions because this car is a little bit bigger than it looks. It's 4.85 by 1.88 meters. That means it's 22 centimeters longer than an Ionic 5. Same width, much lower obviously but because it's so low and swoopy it really betrays its size it looks quite small on the road it's it is a lovely looking thing i like this color as well at a glance it's black but in the right lights which we have now quite purple i enjoy that around the back well now that is an eye-catching bottom is it not this has been the talk of the town since this car was first unveiled obligatory Porsche 911 reference. I have to talk about it because even my housemate who knows nothing about cars had a look at a photo of this and went, oh, Porsche. I think that's a bit harsh. I think it's just that historically the 911 with its rear engine is the only car that we associate with this really sloped rear end. Well, this is not this shape because it's rear engined. Of course, it's this shape because this is an aerodynamic shape. So stop calling it a Porsche. Not that that's a bad thing to call a car. Anyway, Beautiful pixel design. Again, we recognize this from the Ionic 5. This looks absolutely mega when you brake in this car because this lights up, but also this lights up in this rear wing, which is also kind of transparent. It looks absolutely fantastic. The thing I'm least sure about design-wise on this car is this rear bumper here. I'm just not entirely sure about these. They look quite... Well, it, it sort of looks like something you'd see on the end version, the sporty one. And I think for that to work, it should be a bit wider and thicker and stancier and archy, but I, I digress. That's very subjective stuff. All told, I am a much bigger fan of this design, having seen it with my own eyes, than I was when I first saw the pictures. I wasn't entirely sure about it at first, and I don't think it's a design classic in the same way that the Ionic 5 instantly was, but it's a really interesting looking thing. And then we've got this, the boot. There was a lot of outcry about this small opening, and yes, it's not a big estate car type thing, it's not an Ionic 5, you're gonna to struggle to get certain shapes of thing in there, but it's actually really big and deep. We're looking at about 401 liters there, which is comfortably 100 plus liters less than the five, but if you need a huge boot, get the five. 401 liters is not small. So then, out on the road in the new Ionic 6. This feels like quite a big moment. And when I say road, I do mean beautiful, twisty, gorgeous, quiet mountain road. I'm a bit in love with this country, I have to say. So what's this thing like to drive? Well, let's start by comparing it to the Ionic 5. It rides a little bit lower. It's obviously a much lower car, and one assumes that the center of gravity is a bit lower too. As such, you do find a little bit less roll in the corners definitely controls its body weight better than its sibling which is a big squashy rolly thing and actually this one i have here this all-wheel drive car this will do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.1 seconds look no slouch no slouch at all but i'm not much interested in driving it quickly or hurrying it along because the car doesn't feel like that's what it really wants to do much like the five it's a very relaxed, serene driving experience. It's very quiet in here. It's very smooth. The steering is quite light. It's a placid car and I don't 
feel the desire to hurry it along. I just don't think the car is much interested in doing that sort of thing. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be really interesting to see what the Ionic 5 and 6 Ns are like when they arrive, I think next year, because these standard cars are just such chilled out machines that they're gonna to have to have very, very, very different personalities. And well, how's that gonna work? I don't know, I can't wait to find out. I'm gonna to return to my tall man gripe now. I do think, and this is potentially my biggest complaint about this car, it's all a bit low down, all of this stuff. These buttons, my knee, even while on the throttle, is slightly obscuring, and that's gonna annoy me if I wanna change my temperature, for example. And over this side, same story. If I need to adjust my wing mirrors, if I need to open the boot, which I don't plan on doing while driving, in fairness, those buttons are slightly obscured. More to the point, if I want to look at something down here, like my temperature or adjust my AC in some way, it's all quite far away down from my line of sight when I'm driving. I have to take my eyes well off the road to fiddle with this stuff, which just seems like a little bit of an oversight. It's a small gripe. I maintain that the solution, and this is just my opinion, would have been to drop the seats a little bit lower. I think people would enjoy sitting really low in their slippery efficient car and I think it would just make all of this work a bit better. I feel like I'm sat slightly too high up in this cabin relative to all the bits and bobs. Anyway, that's that tall person whinge done. The camera wing mirrors are so well done, by the way. Really easy to see, which is kind of the most important thing, right? And I like this as well. When you indicate, you get these little kind of depth perception assistance lines on your screen there. You also get, of course, a little blind spot uh, camera appearing in your gauge cluster just to let you know, it's all clear. We've seen this on the Ionic 5, we've seen it on the Kia EV6, but they're just lovely examples of Kia and Hyundai's little thoughtful touches, little thoughtful things that just make the car easier to use, easier to live with. So nice and glassy in here as well. I have fantastic visibility in all directions. So airy, so light in this cabin, and again, just adds to that sense of relaxation when you're driving it. Now then, interior, Ionic 6. Less game-changing, less groundbreaking than the outside. It would be fair to say much of this is very, very similar to the Ionic 5, which is fine with me. Let's start from the top and work our way down. This is the roof. Um, headroom is obviously somewhat less in this car than it is in the 5 because of that low, swoopy roof line. What's it like in the back? We'll see in a second. In the front, perfectly fine. Tall driver, no issues. I do have the seat all the way down, but that's pretty standard procedure for me. Lots of glass, it's a really airy cabin. When I sit in a car like this, I'm reminded how claustrophobic it is in my Polestar with the little teeny letterbox windows. And that's the problem with that muscular, high haunched design. This car, lots of glass, quite low shoulder line, but still good looking on the outside, which is quite an impressive trick. And also, I kind of feel like I'm right at the front of the car because of that short, stubby, sloped, nose, I feel like visibility will be really good while driving in this thing. One small issue with these camera wing mirrors that we picked up on the way over here, and credit to cameraman Louis for identifying this, if you're a cool kid and you like to drive with your hand hanging out the window or casual like, well, you can't see out the back, so you're going to have to figure out a different sort of uh, hand position if that's your default driving stance. What else? All of this virtually identical to the Ionic 5. The key difference is that the surrounding uh, sort of bezel for the two 12 inch screens is not white anymore. I'm quite pleased about that. I always thought the white surrounding the screens on the 5 made it look a bit like you were in a kitchen. Not there anymore, like that. Steering wheel is the same, no Hyundai logo anywhere in this cabin. Instead, we've got those four little dots. And again, these will show you your charging status when the car is plugged in. Big fan of that. Interesting thing about this cabin is color-wise, it's very muted. It's all different types of gray, essentially. But it's really interesting to look at because of the use of textures. So we've got all sorts of different materials in here. And I wish I could tell you what they all are, but um, I can't remember. But this one goes like this. That's fun. And I like this as well. This is a beautiful piece across the dash. Again, this translucent motif. The plastic on top is see-through, and then underneath there's this kind of textured bit, which looks gorgeous. I'm a fan of that. 
This is interesting, this is new for the six. In the five, it's all open plan, isn't it? You can play footsie with your passenger if you're so inclined. But in this, because it's a saloon, I think they want you to feel a little bit more enclosed. So we've got this kind of crossbeam piece across the middle, which houses the cup holders and the wireless charger. And look, the window switches are in the middle. Whoa, mad, how exciting. Big bin underneath. It is a lovely cabin. I am a fan. Oh, forgot the most important thing. The glove box is still a draw. Why have glove boxes not all been drawers for all of history? It's just better. I don't know why, but it is. Let's get back to the subject of efficiency because for me, that is what this car is all about. Now I mentioned earlier that the press release for this car states that you can expect efficiency around the 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour mark if you spec this car optimally. So that means small battery because it's lighter, rear wheel drive, uh, smaller wheels. I said I think that that number is very conservative. And the reason I think that is because when we drove to this location this morning on the motorway, effortlessly, without even thinking about it, I was seeing 3.7 miles to the kilowatt hour, which is extremely impressive. Again, without even trying. And what I find that that does, knowing that you're in a vehicle that is so efficient, seeing that number proudly displayed on your gauge cluster, makes me want to be more efficient. It sort of becomes a game of how frugally can I drive this car? So just now, for example, when I was coming down this hill, I was controlling my speed purely by adjusting the strength of my regenerative braking by these lovely paddles. I didn't have to do that, I could just use the brake pedal. That's still regen braking, it's the same. But it's fun, it's a fun game of efficiency. Likewise, when I was on the motorway, I found myself experimenting with coasting, with regen fully off versus one pedal driving versus cruise control to see which one would eke out another 0.1 mile per kilowatt hour. At one point I yelled at Andy for opening his window because my efficiency dropped from six kilometers per kilowatt hour to 5.9 and I was fuming. Okay, it may turn you into a massive EV nerd, this car. Maybe you have to be one already to care about this stuff. It's worth noting, you don't have to do all this. If you just want to treat it like a normal car and zoom about in it, it'll still be more efficient than almost any other EV that you can buy right now. That's fine. I'm just telling you how it makes me feel, how it makes me feel like it wants to be driven. And to me, an idiot man-child with an infamously heavy right foot, I find myself just wanting to drive smoothly and gently and efficiently. Back seats, jack test, here we go. Tall person, swoopy roof line, what's the upshot? Well. Lots and lots and lots of legroom. Thank you, EGMP platform. This seat is in my position, by the way, so it's way back. and I've got all the legroom I could possibly need. Headroom, ah, well, it's not ample. I am very much pressing up against the ceiling right now, but I think it's better than I thought it was going to be. You know, I thought it was gonna be really tough in here, like fully hunched over because of that swoopy roof line, but it's not quite as bad as I thought. I could do short and medium journeys in here, no problem. Long story short, if you have very tall children, this may not be the perfect car for you, but as long as you're not doing very, very long drives with very, very tall adults in the back all the time, it's not gonna be an issue. And we've got USB-C charge ports, and we've got heated rear seats in the back of this car. And again, monochrome, simple design, but just interesting textures everywhere. We've got these lovely Bose speakers, we've got this lovely stripey bits on the doors and someone does appear to have attacked this car with a biro, which is a bit of a shame because it's only been alive for 2000 miles, but that doesn't come as standard, don't worry. This I continue to think is questionable. Giving younger siblings the power to crush their older siblings when they get sick of them on long car rides, that's a dangerous recipe. Oh, one more thing. This is a wonderful example of just Hyundai thoughtfulness, just trying to make your life a little bit easier I'm trying to make every car a little bit better than the previous one. There was a lot of complaining with Ionic 5s and EV6s actually about how the seat belts would just kind of bang against the plastics quite a lot when you were driving and make that annoying noise. So what they've done, just created this little slot for the seat belt. Look, 
that slots in there and now it's in position. Andy assures me that this is a feature from voxels of the early 90s, so I can't say that they've invented this, but it's just a nice, thoughtful touch. And of course, we've got that three pin plug, the domestic plug socket back here. I love this. How is this not standard across all electric cars now? This is so, so useful. When we're on big road trips and we're driving in these cars, we use these all the time. You can sit in the back, plug your laptop in, get some work done, very handy. Concluding thoughts on this Hyundai Ioniq 6, well, I think it's astounding. I think it's not just a brilliant electric car, but an important one. Because this is a car that not only prioritizes efficiency, it promotes it. It promotes it on the outside with its wonderful swoopy shape, which just looks like nothing else on the road and really turns heads everywhere you go. But it also does it on the inside with its personality, with the way that it feels to drive, which encourages you, the driver, to be more efficient. This is what happens when you take those principles of efficiency that you see in Aptera and Lightyear and just apply them to a normal car. And it is better in every measurable way for it. I'll give you the perfect example. This car that I'm in, the big battery variant, has a WLTP range of 382 miles, right? Huge, huge range. But the smaller battery variant, that's 267 miles WLTP range. That's more than enough for most people. Historically, no one buys the small battery version of any electric car because, well, it's usually not enough. But because this car is so frugal with its battery, because the shape is so slippery and the motors are so efficiently designed, that smaller, cheaper version of the car might well be more than enough for you and your use case. When you make the car more efficient, you don't need to give it as much battery matter, which means it's kinder to the planet, which means it's kinder to your wallet. It just makes everything better. You can drive this car in one of two ways. You can treat it like a normal electric car. You can zoom around in it and enjoy how airy it is and how spacious it is and all the tech and how comfortable and quiet it is. Or you can play along with the game of efficiency that the car is playing and add to it by coasting on motorways and yelling at your children for opening their windows. And it doesn't matter. Either way, this is just a better electric car for the fact that it is more efficient than most. So then, Ionic 6, what do you reckon? What do you reckon? Tell me in the comments, I'd be very curious to know. Personally, I think it's bloody fantastic. I mean, that's not that surprising, right? Because let's be honest, it's an Ionic 5 with a different body and lots more efficiency. That is a winning combination. And I have used the E word many, many times in this video, but I have to because it's important, because it's the key to making electric cars better. I've made a massive rod for my own back here because I know what's going to happen. The N version is going to arrive next year with a million horsepower and I'm going to want one. And then you're going to make fun of me for being a hypocrite. But for the time being, we've got this one. And it is, I'm going to say it, the best car in the world. There you go. Bombshell. Fight me. Don't care. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.